As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sins. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. As long as it is they, we must keep on doing the work of him who sent me. Night is coming. When no one can work. <laughs> While I am in the world, I am the light for the world. <laughs> After he said this, Jesus spat on the ground and made some mud with the spittle. He rubbed the mud on the man's eyes. Go and wash your face in the pool of Siloam. This name means scent. So the man went, washed his face, and came back, seeing. His neighbors then, and the people who had seen him begging before this, asked, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? He's the one. No, he isn't. He just looks like him. I am the man. How is it that you can now see? The man called Jesus made some mud, rubbed it on my eyes, and told me to go to Siloam and wash my face. So I went, and as soon as I washed, I could see. Where is he? I don't know. Then they took to the Pharisees, the man who had been blind. The day that Jesus made the mud and cured him of his blindness was a Sabbath. Pharisees then asked the man again how he had received his sight. He put some mud on my eyes. I washed my face, and now I can see. A man who did this cannot be from God, for he does not obey the Sabbath law. How could a man who is a sinner perform such miracles as these? And there was division among them. You say he cured you of your blindness. Well, what do you say about him? He is a prophet. The Jewish authorities, however, were not willing to believe that he had been blind and could now see until they called his parents. Is this your son? You say that he was born blind. How is it then that he can now see? We know that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we don't know how it is that he is now able to see, nor do we know who cured him of his blindness. Ask him. He is old enough, and he can answer for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that anyone who said he believed that Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. 
That is why his parents said, he is old enough, ask him. A second time, they called back the man who had been born blind. Promise before God that you will tell the truth. We know that this man who cured you is a sinner. I do not know if he's a sinner or not. One thing I do know. I was blind. And now I see. What did he do to you? How did he cure you of your blindness? I have already told you and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Maybe you too would like to be his disciples. They insulted him and said, You are that fellow's disciple. But we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for that fellow, however, we do not even know where he comes from. <sighs> what a strange thing that is. You do not know where he comes from, but he cured me of my blindness. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He does listen to people who respect him and do what he wants them to do. Since the beginning of the world, nobody has ever heard of anyone giving sight to a person born blind. Unless this man came from God, he would not be able to do a thing! You were born and brought up in sin! And you are trying to teach us. And they expelled him from the synagogue. Jesus heard what had happened. He found the man. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Tell me who he is, sir, so that I can believe in him. You have already seen him. And he is the one who is talking with you now. I believe, Lord. And he knelt down before Jesus. I came to this world to judge, so that the blind should see and those who see should become blind. Some Pharisees who were there with him heard him say this and asked him, Surely you don't mean that we are blind too. If you were blind, then you would not be guilty. But since you claim that you can see, this means that you are still guilty. 